The African Transformation Movement has written to the Speaker of the National Assembly, that's Ms. Nosi Viwe Mapisa Nwakula, to request for a special sitting with President Cyril Ramaphosa. The party is calling for the President to address Parliament on the Just Energy Transition Partnership and the international loans announced at COP27. We're now joined by ATM President Vuyo Zungula to discuss this further. Thank you very much for availing yourself this morning. In a statement that you released on the 17th of November, you know that the ATM and using words such as it is very anxious. Uh, in fact, you're worried that the sovereignty of South Africa might have been mortgaged. Um, how so? Um, firstly, morning to Tuzile. Um, look, what's important for us um, as the ATM is to remind people that Parliament um, is a Parliament of the people of South Africa. And whatever that Parliament does, it needs to play an oversight role over the executive. Now, the loans that are taken by the executive, they are going to be ultimately paid by the citizens. Therefore, it is the duty of Parliament to ensure that those loans are above board and they actually bring value to the people of our country. We can't be having a state whereby loans are taken on behalf of the citizens, but there's no tangible impact those loans are, are, are making to the economy on behalf of the citizens. We cannot allow a situation whereby loans were taken to build power stations. Now, as the power stations are starting to function, and um, you know they should be made to function optimally, we are now having a government that is going to these international organizations to take up more loans to, um, for transition um, from coal to um, green energy. Whereas South Africa is not even in the top 10 um, 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 polluters um, when it comes to coal. When South Africa, um, you know, is, is in a state of darkness because it's um, continuous load shedding. So for us, it is, it is making us very anxious as the ATM that also the conditions of these loans, most importantly, we are not aware about the conditions of these loans and would not want a situation whereby when a new government emerges in 2024, it is confined in terms of the policy direction. It is confined. It cannot take the decision it wants to take because the loans that were taken um, between now and then were loans that actually confined that government from having the freedom to take up policy positions and policy directions that are of value and benefit to the people of our country. So that is why we want the president to come to parliament and be transparent about these loans because these loans are not his personally. It is loans that actually um, are going to be paid by the people of our country. If my memory serves me correctly, it was the spokesperson of the presidency, Mr. Vincent Manguenya, um, where this particular question was put to him by a journalist on Monday when he was announcing the president's program uh, for the week. Um, and he mentioned or directed that particular journalist to National Treasury to find out the detail of the terms um, and the conditions uh, of the loans. Is this something that the party could possibly do or um, will the president only satisfy? Um, look, um, Rosalie, you have a president that has been going out. It is him that is making um, these loan announcements. It is him that is going to these organizations and seeking these loans. Therefore, it only makes sense if it's him that is accounting um, on these loans. You know, we will not accept a situation whereby he makes the loans, he makes the announcements of the loans, whereas the responsibility of accounting on the nature and the conditions of these loans, he defers that responsibility to someone else. So it's, it's very clear on our side that you can't want to take the credit as a president for, um, for getting the country loans. But when the time comes for you to be questioned about the nature of these loans, you pass it back to someone else. You're also raising concern about um, the amounts of monies that were pledged towards South Africa at COP26. This too, did um, parliamentarians um, actually get um, any detail in terms of the terms and conditions? Not at all. That is why for us it's critical that, um, you know, we, we, we hold the government accountable. We've seen in some countries in the, in the continent how they to lose their assets because of their non-payment of some of the loans. So what is making us very, very anxious as the ATM, it is, um, you know, the conditions that are made to be secretive because they are saying um, for some reasons, 
um, you know, it's for competitive reasons. And then after, you find that South Africa will not have the freedom to determine its own direction when it comes to policy, when it, when it comes to um, what it wants to do in the country. Rather, it will have to abide by the conditions that are set up um, by those um, international companies. We note that some of these international organizations, they've got policy confinements to say these are the policy um, 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 stipulations that we are going to bring about as um, these organizations to make sure that you are going to remain as a country in a position where you can pay back these loans, which makes us anxious because that ultimately means the power um, in the direction of the country is not going to be, um, you know, at the hands of South African citizens. Ultimately, the, 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 the country is basically ruled by these international organizations on the conditions of these loans. That is why for us it is critical that the president accounts and is transparent so that South Africans can know exactly what type of a government that we have and what type of a government that goes out there and sells out the sovereignty of our country. In terms um, of the loans and the conditions that you still do not know about um, the conditions from COP26 and now COP27, which has just concluded, is that unusual? Um, no, it should not be un unusual. Um, you know, the government um, is a government um, of the people of our country. Therefore, we should be having a state whereby whenever a loan is taken, that loan belongs to the people. It has to be paid um, by the people. As we're sitting now, um, each South African citizen, if you can um, do, um, the, the, if you can just speak about how much debt we have, it means um, each citizen is paying, um, has got a debt of like 75,000 based on the debt that the country has taken um, um, for, 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 the city, for, for, for the programs of the country. Therefore, what's important is that the citizens must have, um, um, must have that clarity of knowing these are the loans that have been taken and this is what has happened to those loans. This is the amount of value. You'll recall that in 2020, the government took so many loans under the guise of wanting to stimulate the economy to protect um, SMMEs um, due to the lockdowns. But when the economies are also speaking, they're saying the impact of those loans has not been seen. Therefore, we've got a government that takes those loans However, those loans do not do the intended purpose, and therefore South African citizens will be basically be paying for something that they do not derive any benefit from. So that is why it's critical that there must be transparency, and there must be accountability, and there must be that assurance that the sovereignty of our country is not going to be threatened by the loans that are taken by this government. So essentially, Mr. Zungula, the party noting that there's no relationship without conditions, then you also putting it on record that you are opposed uh, to South Africa's closing of coal plants um, for a number of reasons. Perhaps if you can give us two. Um, the first one, you know, the European countries, they've been importing coal from South Africa there's been 800% increase in the coal exports from South Africa to um, those European countries. It is the very same countries that are influencing South Africa to stop using coal. Therefore, it means our natural resources as a country are benefiting those countries. And in, in fact, um, through these conditions, they are reinforcing our natural um, resources for their benefit. And the second one, if you are going to talk about um, you know, the, 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 coal, the, the problem of power that we have in our country. That problem has been widely uh, and thoroughly explained by the Minister of um, Minerals and Resources and Energy. Therefore, we cannot allow a situation whereby money was taken by the government to finance the production and the infrastructure development of power stations. Now, hardly a few years after some of these power stations are completed, we are now taking more money to move away from those power stations into renewables that are not stable, renewables that um, do not guarantee that we are going to um, live, uh, we are not going to have um, load shedding. Therefore, that is why as the ATM we do not agree with this transition, which is baseless, a transition which by 
by, 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 the, by the manner in which the other governments have been treating South Africa, it clearly shows that they want to just extract our coal for their own benefit and we remain in darkness. Vuyo Zungula is the leader of the African Transformation Movement. Thank you for your time this morning.